My name is Marie Manuel, and I am the Membership and Partnerships Manager at the Nonprofit Association of Oregon. NAO is proud to have over 1,100 nonprofit members representing Oregon's robust nonprofit sector. Today, we are spotlighting Equine Outreach Horse Rescue. We are here today with Diane Scott, the board president at Equine Outreach. Thank you, Diane, for joining me today. Thank you very much for having me. Well, let's get started. So, Diane, tell us about Equine Outreach and what is your mission and who do you serve? Um, Equine Outreach is a nonprofit horse, horse rescue, shelter, uh, and rehabilitation organization that was founded back in 2004. Um, it's managed entirely and, and, and run entirely by volunteers, 100%. Uh, and to date, they have um, rehomed over 800 equines. We believe that every equine deserves respect, love, and compassion, regardless of their age and health or behavior. Uh, we strongly believe that uh, prevention through community outreach and education is important to long-term solutions of the problem of equine abuse, neglect, and abandonment. And we're dedicated to protecting and enhancing the quality of life of equines while creating a second chance for a good life and for an abused and neglected equines. So these past few months have been um, some of very challenging times. How is your organization doing, first of all? And how have you all adjusted if you've adjusted or changed ways to serve your community? Well, um, equine outreach was rocked by the um, suddenness and severity of the pandemic, just like everyone else. Um, we had to reduce our volunteer group um, from about 75 people to about five uh, in just a few short weeks. We had to cancel all of our spring and summer fundraisers. Um, so the initial effects were, were pretty devastating. Um, then of course we had the hazardous smoke <laughs> from the state fires that you know created a constant worry about you know daily evacuation plans for the horses, um, you know the the health and health threats for the people, the volunteers as well as the horses. In light of all that, we still were able to um, donate some some extra hay that we had to uh, rescue sites in the valley to try to help out in the ways we, we could. We also donated some grain that we had as well. We've done a lot of community outreach in the past, including um, memory care. We have uh, uh, visitors from a memory care facility in, in, and assisted living in Bend that come out once a month and get to you know groom the horses and and have tea and cookies with us and all that kind of stuff. That had to, of course, stop. We had um, Oregon Youth Challenge. Uh, they had you know, anywhere between 10 and 30 uh, teenage men and women coming out um, and helping us every week, you know, during the, the course of their, their when school was in session. And of course that stopped as well. So it, it's it's been challenging, there's no doubt. <laughs> are there other um, success stories or, you know, amidst all of that, um, any organizational milestones that you'd like to share? Yes, actually. Um, like I said, you know, we, we're trying to make lemonade with the lemons that 2020 has given us. Um, we have a new board of directors in place. Actually, now we're up to about 10 volunteers that are feeling safe enough to come back out. Um, we're, we're doing everything we can to um, utilize this time. So we're redesigning the ranch facilities. So we're giving um, larger pens with soft footing. Um, we're we're in making it easier for the volunteers as well as for the horses. Our vet team has helped us um, fine tune our feeding um, program and medical program. So that's been been very good for us as far as you know watching our budget and giving the senior and medically compromised herd that we have right now um, the best feed that they can get. Because we had to cancel all our fundraisers, um, we've been trying to do things more online. We got a grant from. Tides Foundation and Art for More to use art as a way of um, bringing attention to the beauty of horses and the plight experienced by horses at risk um, that, that are and those that are already in rescues and uh, sanctuaries. So we were able to do a, a contest called Art on the Range 
and we had a lot of people submit beautiful art and it's on our website if anyone wants to see um, but it's, you know, basically trying to get the message out. We helped contribute to a new website called loveoregonhorses.com that has a lot of, uh, you know, wealth of information as far as where people can go if they have questions about, you know, uh, adopting a horse or they have questions, you know, they saw a neglected horse, who do they call, you know, those sort of things. Tell us, Diane, what are your organization's current needs and how can the community, you know, find- funders, donors, volunteers support you best? Um, well, of course, you know, a lot of the things that we that I just mentioned, we couldn't do without the support of our um, donors and our community um, and grants and such. Um, there's always a need for financial assistance. So if anyone has um, or wants to help with our mission of, of providing, you know, kindness and compassion to these rescued horses and neglected horses. We have horse sponsorship options uh, with holidays coming up. Maybe somebody on your list is difficult to buy for, and maybe you might want to sponsor a horse for them. If you're local in the area, um, of course, we need volunteers all the time. And it's fairly safe because, you know, we've got 10 acres that people can spread out in. So um, we do ask if there's you know more than three or four people at the ranch that you wear masks but generally it's a pretty peaceful quiet environment to come out and be with the horses and help out if you want to be boots on the ground sort of thing otherwise we have a lot of behind the scenes um, needs as far as you know web design and marketing and social media (laughs) you know fundraising and those sort of things Um, we have a pretty great board right now, but we're always looking for new board members. Um, I think that's about all that I can think of right now. But, you know, the, uh, lot, lots of things that we could use help with. <laughs> well, Diane, to wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to share? But one of the things we've got on the books is um, a lecture series uh, with the um, with the Deschutes County Sheriff it's going to be mainly targeted to um, educating the public on what neglect looks like. So if you're driving down the road, you see a horse, you go, oh, my gosh, that horse looks like it's dying out in the field. Well, it might just be a warm day and it's laying out in the sun and it's fine. You know, it's so there's different different things to look for. And the same with cattle, goats, chickens, rabbits, everything. So there there's going to be speakers that are going to address these things. We've got a lot of ideas and plans and, you know, that we just need to be able to implement once COVID-19, um, you know, subsides. So. Well, Diane, thank you for your time. Um, I'm excited to bring light to equine outreach. So uh, thank you. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it.